This is Wolves Light. Um, as a member of the Budget Committee 10, 12, whatever years ago, I can remember Budget Committee members asking why GASB 34 was not being implemented. And a lot of the answers that we got were that it's just something the auditors think up so they can do a little more work. Uh, well, that's, uh, it's nice to see this coming to fruition. What effect did it have on the, perhaps on the credit of the town when we carried the adverse opinion on the audit all those years? Um, I can't speak to specific credit implications, but in general, it, it really, I think, depends who you're dealing with and their knowledge of your financial statements. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, not just the, the clean opinion, but from, from any metric and any ratio that um, you know, a credit analyst is going to use, you, you need assets to offset the liabilities. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, again, there probably would have been an understanding that there are some assets there. Um, but certainly I, it wouldn't help you <laughs> to not have them recorded. I can't say, you know, specifically in a particular bond issue, um, did that factor into the, to the cost or not? It really depends where you went for that um, and what type of system you're using. But certainly, um, you know, with a brief knowledge of some of the scoring models and whatnot, um, you know, they look at things in terms of certain liabilities for governmental entities, certain liabilities as a percentage of assets and as a percentage of revenues when they're, you know, developing their, their scoring to figure credit worthiness. Hmm. So if your accountants tell you you ought to implement some measure, you probably ought to pay attention. Yeah, and well, this is a big one. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I, one. I think I asked the manager last week is there, uh, Fred has given us lists during the year of property the town owns. Is there a site that we can go for or to or a master list that shows us exactly what properties are stipulated as part of GASB 34? Is something online or how do you, how do you preserve that information? Is that? Well, Christie maintains a capital asset listing, which is an inventory of all the assets. Uh -huh. um, and that's something that, um, you know, I evaluate and retain with my work papers for the audit right. for the required period of time. But the district maintains all those records and, you know, adds to them on an ongoing basis as, um, okay. as things are purchased. So is this something that one of us or a member of the public could say, may we look at it? Is it something that's... Sure, yeah. I, wouldn't, I mean, it's something that that Christy has <clears throat> available, so. Probably not gonna have a stampede, but we would have, okay. Um, so we can, we can assume that that will be maintained every year. Now on your page, a second. Okay, the capital assets at year end for 2014 showing on page seven. Um, the assets, uh, total net capital assets are down a little from the 2013 position. What happens in 10 years or 20 years or whatever when the assets keep depreciating? Um, Do we end up by, own, by, by having nothing as a town? How uh, low can you go? <laughs> Typically, no, because you're, you generally your assets are being replaced. Um, the useful lives are, are designed to, to actually cover the period um, useful life of the asset. So if you get down to zero on something, it generally means that it's, it's no longer usable and you'd have an asset to replace that. So, you know, an example would be the fire stations that you just replaced that eventually those will go down to zero. But if those go down to zero, they're probably not functional for you anymore and you'll be looking at either a major improvement or something of that. Certainly nature. took long enough to get those done. Okay. Um, 100 years amongst friends. Oh, good grief. <laughs> <coughs> Let's see. Um, <coughs> covered some of the... On page 14. <clears throat> and this is the this is the thing that really gets me going. 
bottom under other financing sources and uses net change in fund balances and you've got the non-spendable fund balance the decrease in committed fund balance the decrease in assigned fund balance for abatement contingency unassigned fund balance beginning and unassigned fund balance ending i get the abatement part of course the terms keep being changed which i think annoys me and confuses everybody because i still call it surplus to be perfectly frank with you um the the strong suggestion from revenue admin is that towns hold from five odd percent up to some odd 17 percent for a contingency in case of a, a big judgment or a big problem where does that fit in i know it has nothing to do with abatements where does that fit in here is that that's the unassigned fund balance? Correct. That's what they're talking about is the unassigned <coughs> fund balance, which um, at year end for 14 was the $5.4 million. So it mm -hmm. would certainly be within or on the high end of that range. Okay. So that theoretically would be recalculated every year. Correct. What, what makes me concerned is we have, uh, I think we have a list of about several Warren articles here to the tune of $444,500 that will be proposed in March for normal, basically what would be normal operating uh, budget expenditures. I'm concerned about drawing down the unassigned fund balance for that type of expenditure. How should we be trying to maintain a, a level or a base say 5%, 5 to 7% each year? Well, I mean, I think, I mean, firstly, I would say developing a realistic budget is the start of it to, to know what you're getting into okay. going forward. Um, it's an ongoing, it, it's an ongoing battle that boards struggle with. Again, I think you're within the recommended amount. Okay. Um, but it's unique. It depends on the community. It depends on um, your particular circumstances. It depends on the amount that you have in reserve and trusts mm -hmm. um, in your ability to, you know, expend, say, money as agents for some unforeseen issues. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's unique anywhere. I think that's something that, um, you know, boards always struggle with is, um, you know, stability in the tax rate and maintaining a healthy fund balance. Um, and again, I think the trend over the last several years in Hampton has been that, that it has been building, even with the use of some of these mm -hmm. um, fund balances. And, and also to note, I mean, there are, again, there is still an abatement, con there are still contingency amounts in there. They're just lesser than in previous years. So um, I think part of it is to, to identify those estimates, really, and, and record them so that, you know, they're not part of that fund balance and you're not being mm -hmm. caught by surprise or having to use an, un, uh, an unforeseen amount of that in any given year. It's been my understanding that if, if one is to take money out of the uh, un, unassigned fund balance, it's more, um, it's a smarter thing to do to assign that the monies to the capital reserve or, new, or capital reserve funds rather than operating budget expenses. Um, yeah, that, I mean, if you look at when you say smarter, that again is just shifting. Right. It's really shifting it over from an unassigned fund balance to a technically a committed fund balance that now. Right. It was just part of your surplus. Now it's designated for a specific trust purpose. Right. To be used as a as an amount going. Vis a vis operating budget, a pulling out for operating budget. Right, and then generally, again, it's just planned, and then you know you are able to take money from the unexpended balance of those trust funds to supplement and stabilize mm -hmm. the tax rate in the future. Right. Um, the another comment I get from the public is that why do we bother uh, figuring out the capital assets? Um, what do we care? You know, what what could happen? Well, what could happen? It's not a very if sophisticated I'm, that perspective. I'm assuming <clears throat> that a large judgment against the town or something would that factor into the capital assets? You mean as far, I'm, I'm not, not sure I understand the question. I'm uh, not Phil. 
What? I'm not sure I understand well, the question. Well, you have you're showing a value of approximately approximately fifty million dollars mm -hmm. in capital assets. Are we declaring that? Is one of the reasons we're declaring that in case something catastrophic should happen and the town should be sued by somebody, we would have assets to no, and I supplement? Think, um, what is, what's it for? It's to present the financial position of the town fairly, okay. is what I would say. So. Um, and the, the easiest way I could explain it is um, it would be misleading to say, if you look at page 8, and you have 23 million, let's call it 25 million in long-term liabilities due within a year and due, than, due within more than mm -hmm. one year, that you, as a town, um, contractually entered into long-term debt agreements for $25 million right. that had no economic benefit to the town. Um, I think, like with anything, you got to match the other side of that, and it would be misleading. Certainly, it's misleading to say that uh, the town of Hampton doesn't have any capital assets of value, quite quite the opposite. So that's why I would say, I, I don't think it has any, um, you know, effect on judgments or anything like that. It's more just a fair presentation. This is a snapshot of what you owe and what you own at year end, okay. and it gives a fairer picture of that. So we don't have to worry about selling the town office? Correct. Okay. Um, I could grab the guy. Just for a second here, because I have a couple of other things flagged. The trustees um, section, uh, you, it appears that there were no deficiencies or no problems or whatever with the reporting uh, on the trust funds, including the real estate trust fund. Correct. Okay, that looked good. And one second. Okay, I think that that is it for the moment. Thank you so much for coming. This is a big help, I think.